guys, welcome back to Booze Reviews in Black and White. I am D'Amico, and I am going to quickly do a bourbon uh, review because I'm losing my sunlight here. Uh, <clears throat> I have Russell Reserve uh, Small Batch 10-Year uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Uh, this is 45% alcohol by volume, uh, which is 90 proof. Um, I do not have the malt bill or anything, uh, but this is made in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Uh, so for you guys in the know, know exactly which distillery that is. Um, yeah, you know what? And to be honest, Wild Turkey 101 is not something that I would drink. Uh, so I, when I saw this, I'm like, oh yeah, I should grab this because obviously it's going to be a little bit better than the what the wow fail what? i remember buying this in des moines iowa <laughs> and in travels i taped it so the bottle wouldn't come open so bear with me okay there we go fail got it we're good to go <clears throat> um so like i said before i don't have the malt bill. Um, you can probably look it up. I know you can't see the bottle anymore, um, but I'll take a picture and you can see it. Ooh, right off the nose. I smell cedar planks. I have some notes here too. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel. Almost a fruit action. Uh, almost a little bit of cherry almost. Just a hint, like an artificial, like a cherry Laffy Taffy or something. But I, I almost always get that with, with a lot of the big uh, Kentucky bourbons. I'm sure it's something else, but that's what I like to, to call it. So anyways, yeah, she's bursting with, with, with scent. Aroma. Scent? Wow. Aroma. <laughs> I do know what I'm talking about sometimes. Mm. Get a little bit of a uh, almost like caramelized orange peel. Definitely some caramel, some vanilla notes, massive wood, massive oak. <laughs> massive wood. <laughs> mm. Not getting a whole lot of the alcohol burn, the bite very spicy though it's got a lot going on brown spice uh, cinnamon it's a nutmeg almost not quite full spicy a um, <clears throat> little bit of pepper white pepper almost there's something else going on in this that I can't quite put my finger on I'm going to add a splash of water, a couple of drops, just to see what happens. And then I'm going to talk to let it mix a little bit. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. This is more of a question of the day, question of the video kind of thing. What have you guys been up to this summer? Um, I haven't done a video in quite a while. Uh, I do apologize for that. I've been really busy. Uh, getting things done so um, yeah what have you guys been up to tell me some of the fun crazy things that you did this summer that happened to you this summer that you totally did not expect or intend to happen um, yeah so I'm just buying myself some time blabbing here um, I didn't do a whole lot but work I mean honestly that's pretty much it um, I, well actually that's not true I did do a couple of uh, whiskey seminars uh, for a couple of really fun e events, so um, that was kind of cool. 
and then I will do those whiskeys again for you guys because you guys are my rock. Mm. Let's see. <clears throat> quick sidebar and then I'll get back on track. I was at one of the, doing one of these uh, whiskey seminars uh, for a charity event uh, in Minneapolis <clears throat> and one of the guys was talking to me about adding water to his whiskeys and how it was this big abomination and blah 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 and I was like first once you buy it it's yours. You do whatever the hell you want to do with it. Um, but I honestly and firmly believe, and I'm pretty sure there's some science behind it somewhere. One of you guys know something that I don't uh, officially. Um, I think that once you break the whiskey, uh, you add a little water to it. That's called breaking the whiskey. Once you break the whiskey, it absolutely opens up. Um, immediately with the aromas. You give it a little second, or uh, you know, a quick little spin, a few seconds to kind of do its thing, uh, chemical bonding or whatever the hell it's doing. Uh, this is me trying to sound scientific. Um, it opens up immediately. The aroma wakes itself up. I mean, it's boom, coming out of the glass. You can smell it all day long. Secondly, once you let it kind of integrate the water with the whiskey and do its chemical reaction nonsense, mumbo jumbo, um, I think it tastes differently. Um, almost all whiskeys, um, especially the big, heavy, uh, I shouldn't say heavy, heavy as in weight, uh, viscous uh, bourbons, uh, especially from Kentucky, um, and then some of the bigger, uh, peatier scotches, uh, those barley barley malt uh, whiskeys, definitely benefit from having a few drops of water. Um, I think there's a chemical scientific thing that one of you guys at least knows about out there that can probably leave a comment and tell us all exactly what it is. Uh, <clears throat> but I think it helps the flavor. I think it opens things up. Um, and for me, I like to break the whiskey when I'm eating and like to sip on whiskey while I'm eating food. I don't know why. It's just what I do. Maybe because I like food. Who knows? Um, but since I've added the water here, I think it's changed it quite a bit. A lot more of that brown spice, but there's nuttiness too. Um, that pepper component kind of went down a little bit, kind of subsided. Um, I'm not getting the cherry, kind of artificial cherry flavor on the nose. It's a lot more oak, uh, almost cedar. If you've ever smelled like a cedar plank, uh, if you haven't, go to like Home Depot or something. They sell little packs of cedar planks either for flooring or shingling or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Or, you know, if you're going to be cooking salmon, if you're in a place on the coast that's, that does a lot of salmon, they usually sell cedar planks. Kind of rub it a little bit with your, with your hand and give it a little heat action, a little friction and smell it. You get a lot of that out of this bourbon. But yeah, the vanilla comes through on the mouth and the, and the nose. Um, it's a big, friendly bourbon. Um, it's not the best. Um, I still think uh, something like Knob Creek would blow this out of the water. Uh, but this is a very well done 10 year old small batch uh, <clears throat> bourbon. Um, I have seen the small batch single barrel. Um, I, I don't own that one. So, um, I haven't had it. Uh, so if any of you guys have had the single barrel, uh, let me know which barrel you had. Uh, it should say it on the label what barrel it was uh, At least what batch uh, And let me know what you guys thought of that and if you've had multiple barrels or multiple uh, Batches bottles from different batches. Let me know how they differ um, 
I think uh, I'm gonna do a Jack Daniels uh, single barrel uh, taste off, I guess. Maybe one or well, maybe two barrels, two or three barrels. I'm gonna try to get a third bottle um, from a different barrel or a different series um, and kind of see how they differ. Um, and then I'll tape it and let you guys be a part of that too. And you guys can leave your comments and all that stuff too. So, <clears throat> anyways, I'm gonna rate this one after this last sip. Yeah, if you haven't had this, uh, the Russell Reserve 10 year small batch, uh, Kentucky straight, try to find it. It was about 30 bucks in, in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, I know here in Minnesota, it's about 35 ish or so, um, depending on where you go. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why liquor is cheap in Iowa, I, whatever. Um, I would give this one honestly a solid 87 points maybe 88 points actually 88 plus I give it an 88 plus with the water 87 before the water before I broke it it was just a lot of spice and a lot of things going on I think the water helped it kind of metal meld together the flavors if you've ever made a sandwich eat it right away it tastes different than if you make a sandwich and wait 20 minutes the flavors kind of get together and anyways i gotta go i'm losing my light um, i will catch you guys on the flip side